Hey guys and girls, welcome back to another beautiful video on this beautiful channel, this beautiful day. How you doing? Hope you're doing great. Let me just check if everything's okay. Yep. Alright, so we've been talking about a bunch of stuff lately and a bunch of operators and all that stuff. But uh, that's all good and important. But today I thought we'd do some more fun. And I think we're at that point where we're going to talk about files, right? Input output to files. And then later go on to functions and stuff. Because I, I like getting this input output out of the way before we before we get going so input output to file now I just want you to not freak out in this video all right it might seem complicated it's really really easy all right so input from your keyboard to your computer it's basically the same system like a stream input from a file to the memory right or, or your program and output from your program to the screen as in a console you're gonna output something from your program to a file instead so you kinda of just switch it around so IO stream we use for input output uh, it stands for input output stream remember uh, from the keyboard to screen and from the screen to or from the program to uh, uh, the, the screen basically the console but we need something else include file stream f stream and this is gonna let us actually uh, print out stuff to a file and input from a file all right and there's a bunch of things you need to know so let me just get those out of the way if the file is not created already when you're outputting to a file so this is going to be uh, output to file so some things you want to know if file does not exist with a certain name it will be created um, usually it's a text file, text or binary. And we're gonna go through text first, binary way later in the tutorials, but text first. So um, the the file type does not really matter. It will be text anyway. So what the, what I mean by that is if you have a file, something something dot txt that's fine you can open it with notepad and stuff and that's mostly that notepad will be able to see it if you remove that txt it'll become like a white file right you don't know no the computer doesn't know which program to use to open that file but in case of programming it's raw data in that file so all our program or c++ cares about is that there's some type of data in the file that you can read now it can read like rubbish data as well but if if even if you name your file something something dot uh, your name like or whatever the hell like anything if you open that file C++ will still see that there's text in that file and will read it doesn't matter what the extension is so you don't have to worry about it like having to having that extension having to be legit that's just so you can open it easily so Windows knows what program to use to open that file but the data in the file is what's important so just remember that don't freak out about that alright so because I'm not gonna use I'm gonna start off by making a txt file and we're gonna print out to that and we're gonna try to open it in Windows then I'm gonna change the extension I'll show you that it doesn't matter so let me just let me just do this uh, let me start off by saying that to create to print out to a file you um, let's make a string std string um, data and we'll say this is data and then we'll put a new line in there hello this is from a new line so there you go that's some data that we're gonna print to a file now if you go into your folder if I go into my folder here this is where it's default gonna land right here wherever your CPP files are alright so it's gonna land in there you can change that by um, specifying where you want it to go but we'll start off by just doing it basically like like normal so what you want to do is uh, off stream now this stands for out file stream and then obviously if stream for in file so but this is out file because we're printing out to a file and I usually call these out underscore out file just like that that's usually what I call it or just out but let's this is have out file for the um, for the ease of reading so I have out file now you can open it directly by specifying a file name in here 
but I'll show you how to do it in both ways. So let's just make a string file name and just name it something. Let's name it my file.txt. So I'm just going to say txt right now so you guys can see how that works. txt. Now I can either do file name dot c string in here and remember to use this dot c string. Basically what this does is this converts this string to a c style string because our file is an old type of from c. Uh, it, it has this old type of thing so it wants a c string and what by that I mean a const char array. And we haven't talked about arrays yet uh, but we'll get to that later. Now this is a way to have a bunch of characters like a string but this is an old type of string but C++ still supports it. We'll talk about that later. Let's just make a regular string and write dot C string because if I don't we're gonna run into some problems, some errors. It might not open it so you just want the C underscore str just like that. So now it's gonna open it by default. This is how you open the file uh, in the constructor but you can also do this. You can say out file dot open and then your file name. You can obviously give it a file name directly like this, my file.txt or something, but you can save a file name in a variable as well. So let's just open it like this and then we're gonna, this is an important part, all right? What you wanna do is out file.close. You just wanna make sure you get that down because if you don't close the file, you can run into a bunch of problems later. So you want your, after you're done with the file, you wanna close it always either if you're printing out to it or into it or whatever it doesn't really matter so what you want to do is between those two things open and close you want to say if in file dot is oh, oh out file excuse me out I'm so used to in file out file dot is open so we're just saying okay if it's open then we're gonna do stuff because it's unnecessary to do things if it couldn't open this file all right for some reason so now it's going to create a new file uh, in our case because we don't have my file.txt existing already otherwise it would have just opened it now we'll create it and open it for us uh, there's flags you can set also it's really good to know I'll just write it here flags we'll talk about that later later on as we as we go into more advanced stuff uh, but for now we'll just try to keep it really basic so you can play around with this please google flags and stuff like that you'll probably you'll probably see what I mean. Anyway, we opened our file. So let's just make a std c out. I am open. And then just like a new line that. And we'll see if it opens the file for us. It's a very basic thing. Just to open the file and we'll see. I am open. All right. And if we check in our folder now, I have a my file text document recognized by Windows because I added the .txt and it's empty right now obviously. So next time I run this it's just gonna open it. It's not gonna create it. It already had created it. Uh, open file location already created but it's there so it recognized it opened it for us. So there you go. Now we created a file. Now how do you print stuff out here? You're like what the hell? How am I supposed to do this? Well it's pretty simple. Out file out file and now this is important this is for printing out to a file and this is for reading in from a file so we'll use the left arrows arrow brackets uh, pointy things that I call them and we'll just say data like that or I think it might be the other way no wait why is that not working wait just give me a second just give me a second our file is there out file if it's open print out some stuff okay so data didn't want to print that out let me just see data what's the issue so matches these operands uh, num, 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 num. okay mm-hmm mm -hmm. that's C string then it's gonna print it out for some reason okay I'll check on that later but if I just run this then it's going to print out and if we go into our file again which I just closed hello this is data hello this is from a new line see how that worked boom easy and it, what it did was it added this little white space as well so I'll just do that 
and we should be fine. Now this operator didn't have something to print out string because I didn't include string. So if I just remove this, we should be fine. Yeah. So I included string. That was string's fault. String didn't know that know about this operator. Don't think too much about it. Just include string if you use string because you'll get a lot more functions to, to work with. And now if I if I do this again, it's probably going to append that and that means that it's going to why do I keep closing that? I shouldn't close that. Um, no, it, it, it just uh, it uh, overwrote that. So that's good in a case for game, for example, where you don't want to add stuff to a file every time. You want to overwrite whatever is in it. And that um, helps us out. So every time I change data, if I say hello from new line 2 and I run this, now my file is going to have hello, this is from new line 2 because it's a, a new. Uh, this is the next time I ran it and wrote it kind of overwrote that uh, so that's printing out to a file now there's more things you can do that is a string pretty easy you're like how do I print out an integer so if I have an int i 23 and I remember this is a stream f stream file stream so I can add a bunch of stuff in here I can add i as well I can add literals basically just things on the fly like a space so if I run this and I open my file I'm gonna see 2 dot space 23 so it didn't have to convert this integer to something to write it out to print it out to the file it just did that automatically for me because this operator is defined for the integer it knows what to do with it so there you go you can do that with a bunch of stuff um, any way you want it you can format the strings you can you can format them uh, using end line new lines so if you wanna if you for example I wanna show you a good example here where you could use this so if I have the file name uh, person database let me just call it person database and I'm gonna do this so this is gonna be std string uh, name uh, he's called Daniel for all you Daniels out there here you go this is your spot this is your spot. This is your time to shine. Int age 23. Um, std string address. Uh, I don't know. Some street 23 654 something something. Some country. And then that's basically it. Basically, I int uh, height uh, maybe or double double. Let's use some different things. Double double height uh, one seventy five meters. Then one seventy five meters. I think. Yeah. Okay. Is that too tall? No, it's about two meters. That's good. And then we'll have one more thing. We'll have one more thing. We need. Uh, we need string std string cat name bob so his cat's name is bob so that's cool there we go so we have bob daniel some some information so i say that i want to print this out into a file into my person database all right so this is going to be daniel being printed out so i'm going to say out file name i'm going to make a new line here after name because that's how I want my database to be built I can do this and then I'm gonna make a new thingy I'm gonna say H and then a new line I'm just gonna copy this so I don't have to write this over and over again H then I'm gonna print out address and then there you go address height like that and then whoops new line I know what I just did, and then uh, cat name, and then like that. So there you go. Basically, that's what I want to do. So I want to print out the name, age, address, height, cat name. So that's how our database is going to be built. And then probably another person and another person, and so on and so on. So if I just run this, what's going to happen is there's going to be a new file created that's going to be called person database. 
and Daniel 23 some street something something 175 Bob and then you can kind of add stuff to it. you can say like you can add name like data if you want to open the file then if I run this and I'll open person database again you'll see it says name colon Daniel and so on and so on so that's a good way to order stuff in a file now I'll, I'll always have this file now let me remove the dot txt alright and I want to show you what happens to a file with different extensions so let me just delete the person database and I'll run this again kill this fly uh, okay so I just ran the program person database it's a unrecognized file it just says file so you're like hmm the data in there it can't be text right it's just some random stuff because it's it's not a txt file well the extension on, is only for windows windows cares about extensions we don't the data in here is important so if i just tell windows okay this file can be open with this program the data is still in there it's still readable it's just that there is no extension to this so i can i can call this dot blah 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 and it's going to be like sus, 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 file something sus, 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 file and you're like hmm still the data is still in there so the extension isn't really important all right so i can save it as something else for like if you make a game you can call it save dot save or something like that right and i run this then it'll say person database dot save or some shit like that let me just close this as well person database dot save like what is a save file now windows will ask what should I open save file with and you can associate your file type with some kind of program like notepad and then it will associate all save files with notepad you see that so don't worry about extension too much and you should be fine now I, you can remove unwanted extensions in Windows as well with CC cleaner so don't worry about that uh, it won't hurt your computer so there you go that's basically output to a file there's a bunch of more stuff that you can do uh, with that but this is actually one thing and I want to say one more thing be careful with opening files and saving stuff uh, be careful with while loops because if you have a while loop in here while true boom what do you think is gonna happen what do you think is gonna happen your file is gonna be so huge because this is gonna print out this thing while true so it's never gonna end forever and ever and ever so make sure if you have while loops make sure your your um, what do you call it the condition in here is valid so that it doesn't loop forever because if you do that your file is gonna be so huge you might just fill up your whole computer with this one file and it's gonna go crazy now it's gonna take a while and you'll probably realize realize what's happening before it's too late but just be careful with while loops alright so I'm not even gonna touch this program I'm not gonna do that so a good tip is to use for loops while you're printing out imagine if you have a bunch of people in an array which we're gonna talk about later but basically when you have an array let me just tell you that you can use for loops to go through how many people you want to save to the file so if you have 10 people you'd make a for loop and just say i is 0 go through to 10 and all the people in this big box of with smaller boxes print all those out and that's safer because you'll only go to 10 you know you won't go forever and ever and ever so uh, just think about that be careful with that and don't forget the close do not forget the close ever don't ever forget the close all right so uh, that's about it for printing out to a file right now there's probably more stuff like flags and binary saving which is faster faster and we will talk about that a little later but yeah thanks for watching I hope this helped I hope you learned something take care and I'll see you guys and girls in the next one all right bye bye